Okay, this video lesson is on using regression with the calculator to create some quadratic models. So this is a copy of the handout that you were to, be, to have printed out. So let's go ahead and um, do part A together. So the first thing I notice when I look at this is um, it says right here, the year since 1990. So that means at 1990, t equals zero. So when I put these values into list one, I don't want to type in 1990, I want to type in 0. And for 1992, I want to type in 2, and so forth and so on. So let's go ahead and pull up our calculator, and let's go ahead and get those things in our list. And I've already done that for you on my calculator, so you can just pause me until you're right there. Okay. So now we've got the points in our list. Let's turn on our stat plot. So my stat plot is already on. Um, if you needed to turn that on, press enter, and there's your on button. Uh, verify this is list one, list two, because that's where you're putting your data. And now we're going to press zoom nine. And zoom nine, it creates a perfectly sized window based on your data. So the problem says to run a linear regression and run a quadratic regression. And then it asks you which has a higher correlation. Okay, so to have a correlation, we need the correlation coefficient. So let's turn that on. You're going to press second, zero, and you're going to get a catalog of things, and you're just going to arrow down until you come to diagnostics on. So find diagnostics on, and then press enter. you're probably going faster than I am with my calculator here on the screen. You only have to do this one time. Once it's turned on, you won't have to do this again. Okay, there's a diagnostics on and a diagnostics off. So you want diagnostics on, so you're going to press enter. And there it pops up and it says diagnostics on. Press enter one more time and now it should say done. So let's go ahead and run a linear regression. Stat, calc, go down to linear, press enter. Now, by default, it always chooses list one and list two. So if that's where your things are, you're fine. Press enter. And there you've got the equation. So you're going to want to write that on your paper. So let's do that. I'm going to switch back to the paper. And I will use purple for the linear, and that was f of x equals 1.27x plus 20.76. And that had a r squared, which is your correlation coefficient, of 0.9567. And if you're not familiar with this, the closer this number is to 1, the better the correlation is. Okay, let's go back to the calculator. Now, I want to graph this, so we're not going to type this into y equals. Here's a cool way to do it. Press y equals. Press V-A-R-S. Go down to statistics. Press enter. Go over to EQ. And you see where it says regression? That's good. That's a good sign. Press enter. And it just put all of that, all of those decimals in there for you. And there's your linear equation. Looks pretty good. All right. Now we want to run a quadratic. So let's do it again. Let's press stat, calc, go down to quadratic, enter. Enter again. There's your A and your B and your C. Notice the R squared here is quite higher. Let's go ahead and write that on our paper and we'll use a different color for quadratic. Okay, so we have a negative 0.058x squared plus, I'm running out of room here. 2.20x plus 
0.59, and the r squared for the quadratic is 0.9979. Okay. So right now you can tell that the quadratic looks better because it has a higher correlation coefficient. All right, we'll, we'll look at that in a minute. Okay, so let's go back to the calculator. Let's graph this. You're going to press y equals. You're going to arrow down to y sub 2. VARS. Statistics. EQ. Enter. Graph. calculator you may need to do this. Next. Okay. Go over to classic. Press enter. Let's go back and look at our y equals a minute. Let's arrow down. Let's clear this and do it again. Okay. VRS. Statistics. EQ. Enter. That looks a little bit better. Graph. There's the linear one. Here comes the quadratic one. Okay. Super. Great. According to part A, the quadratic looks better. All right. Part B says use the model. Let's go back to the paper here. Use the model to predict the year when 50% of the administrators will be women. So here's a way to do it in your calculator. Back to your calculator. Go to y equals. There's the linear. There's the quadratic. Arrow down to y sub 3, and you're going to type in 50 for 50%. Press graph, and we don't see anything. And we don't see anything. I actually did this on purpose. We don't see anything because we have to change our window. So let's go to our window. And sure enough, y max is 42, and I graphed a line at 50. Well, that's not going to work. So let's open up y max a little bit. Right, so I'm going to open up y max. Oh, I don't know. Maybe I'm going to open it up to 55. And you know what else I'm going to do? I'm going to open up x max a little bit too. I want to see what's going on in the future. So I'm going to open that up to 30 and see what's going on in the future. There's my linear, there's my quadratic, there is my 50% administrators. Oh my gosh, look at this. The linear keeps going up and up and up, doesn't it? The quadratic peaks at some point, which you know is the vertex, and it comes back down. And up here at this point is when 50% of my administrators will be women. So let's find the intersection between the 50% and the linear, second, trace or calc, go down to intersect, enter. Now, up here in the upper left hand corner, it tells you you're on the linear function. That's the one I want, press enter. Now, it's going to jump to the quadratic. I don't want the quadratic, I want the 50%. So arrow down, so you've got your y sub 3 function up here which is your 50%, press enter, press enter one more time. And you get x equals 23.02, we'll just say that's 23 right now. So let's go back to this graph. And I'm just going to do some drawing here. So here's the linear model, right? And blue is the quadratic. And then here was the quadratic model, I'm just sketching. And then let's put in here the 50%. Okay, so at this point right here is the intersection, that point right there, and we got x equals 23. And that means that 23 years after 1990, we'll have 50% administrators if we use the linear model. So you have to take your 1990, you have to add your 23 to it, and that gives you the year 2013. So here's a really interesting example where in part A, 
you determined that the quadratic model was the best based on the correlation coefficient. But in part B, when you looked at it all together, you're probably saying to yourself, this doesn't even make sense that the quadratic model would work because the story problem tells me that this is women administrators. Are you telling me women administrators are going to peak and then they're going to go back down? Well, that doesn't make any sense. But actually, technically, the linear model doesn't make sense either. This tells me that the women administrators are going to take over the world and end up at 100%. Well, that doesn't really make any sense either. So maybe both of these models are not quite the right model for the situation. But we had to pick one of them. So in this case, we are picking the linear model um, to be the best for this part of it when I need to calculate the 50% administrators. Okay. What's more than likely going to happen, and you can probably reason this out yourself in this day and age, what's more likely going to happen is they'll get up to 50% and they'll kind of level off a little bit. And we'll have 50% women and 50% men for administrators in the future. So this is going to be the end of page one lesson of the handout.